Ever tried buying a graphics card and felt like you were reading the alphabet soup? GT, GTX, RTX. I mean, at this point, NVIDIA might as well release the GPU Wi-Fi password edition. Don't worry, today we're going through every NVIDIA GTX graphics card from the baby GT cards all the way to the monster RTX 5090. And I promise, no headache-inducing jargon. Let's first start with the GT era. The 8800 GT was the first real GT card, mid-range, and surprisingly strong for the time. If you had one back then, you were flexing on your friends. Today, let's just say it's about as fast as integrated graphics on a cheap laptop. The GT210 was the bare minimum. Office use, videos, maybe some ancient games. It was basically NVIDIA saying, hey, at least you're not using Intel integrated graphics. It's like buying gym shoes, but only using them to walk to the fridge. The GT220 and GT240, these were made for light gaming, still low power. If you played Counter-Strike or World of Warcraft back then, these cards said, sure, I got you fam, but if you tried Crisis 1, your PC would catch fire faster than a campfire. GT420 and GT430 aimed at media PCs. Netflix, YouTube, movies. Not really gaming heroes, more like streaming sidekicks. These cards were the equivalent of that one friend who just brings snacks, not skills to game night. GT520, GT530, and GT545 budget upgrades. A little better than integrated graphics. These were for people who just wanted their PC to say, yes, I have a graphics card. They were basically the fake designer shoes of GPUs. GT610, GT620, GT630, and the GT640 are low-end gaming cards but GTX cards were still way stronger. You'd buy these only if your budget was tighter than jeans after leg day. Let's just say these cards got bullied by the GTX lineup. Next up, we got the GT710, GT720, GT730, and the GT740. Cheap builds, not meant for modern games. The GT710 especially became legendary for being sold in 2023 as a new card. Yes, people still bought it, probably by accident or, I wouldn't even know why to be honest. The final GT card, the 1030, built on Pascal architecture, surprisingly efficient, good for light esports like League of Legends or CSGO. Basically, the retirement gift of the GT lineup. Tiny card, big respect. It's the old uncle who can still outrun you at a family barbecue. And that's the GT lineup, tiny, cheap, and often roasted by gamers, but they served a purpose. Now, let's talk about the big boys, the GTX cards, GTX 260, GTX 280, the very first GTX card, serious high-end gaming. If you had one, you were basically a PC god back in the day. These cards set the tone for Nvidia's dominance in the high-performance market. GTX 460, GTX 465, GTX 470, GTX 480, built on Fermi architecture. These were gaming staples, but they ran hot, like portable heaters. Performance was great, but energy efficiency wasn't exactly their strong suit. Gamers basically used them for gaming and to warm their hands in winter. GTX 560, GTX 570, and GTX 580. Super popular, mid to high-end cards. Reliable, strong, and beloved. The 580 in particular became a benchmark card that people compared against for years. Basically, the Avengers of gaming GPUs at the time. GTX 660, GTX 670, GTX 680, GTX 690. The Kepler lineup, great performance per watt and the GTX 690, a dual GPU beast. These cards proved NVIDIA could balance power and efficiency, something AMD was struggling with at the time. GTX 760, GTX 770, GTX 780, GTX 780 Ti, a refresh of Kepler. These were rock solid and many retro PCs still run them today. The 780 Ti especially stood tall as the best of its generation and stayed relevant for years. The 780 Ti was like the LeBron James of GPUs, dominant and long-lasting. That was the early GTX era. Now let's talk about the legendary GTX cards, GTX 750, 750 Ti. 
the first Maxwell cards, entry level but efficient, perfect for budget gamers. They proved you didn't need to spend big money to enjoy smooth gameplay at 1080p. Think of it as the Toyota Corolla of GPUs, reliable, cheap, and everyone's first. GTX 960, 970, 980, 980 Ti, mid to high end Maxwell cards, extremely popular. The 980 Ti in particular became a favorite for enthusiasts, offering near Titan levels of performance at a lower price. The Titan X top end prosumer card, great for creators, gamers, and flexing on your friends. It was basically Nvidia's way of saying, if you want the best, you'll pay for it. GTX 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, the Pascal era, hugely popular and loved. The GTX 1060 was the most used card on Steam for years, and the 1080 Ti became legendary. These cards delivered amazing performance per dollar and cemented Nvidia's lead. The 1080 Ti was so good that people still use it today. And now let's talk about the last GTX era. GTX 1650, 1650 Super, 1660, 1660 Ti, 1660 Super. The last GTX cards built on Turing, but without ray tracing. They filled the gap for gamers who wanted modern performance without paying RTX prices, closing the GTX chapter with solid value. It's like buying the iPhone SE, no fancy features, but it gets the job done. This is where stuff becomes more interesting. The RTX era, RTX 2060, 2060 Super. Entry level ray tracing, solid 1080p and 1440p gaming. DLSS made demanding games playable even on mid-range builds. Many gamers saw it as the true gateway into the RTX world. RTX 2070, 2070 Super. Mid-range ray tracing card, great for 1440p, brought RTX features to mainstream gamers at a more affordable level. It quickly became a fan favorite for its balance of price and performance. RTX 2080, 2080 Super, high-end Turing gaming, strong 4K performance with DLSS. Criticized at launch for high prices, but it proved powerful. Many creators used it as an all-rounder GPU for both gaming and productivity. RTX 2080 Ti, flagship Turing GPU, dominated 4K performance. First RTX card to truly showcase ray tracing in a way that impressed. It set the standard for premium PC builds at the time. Now let's do the 30 series, RTX 3050, 3060, 3060 Ti, entry to mid-range ray tracing. 3060 Ti especially stood out for incredible value and surprising performance. These cards were often called the everyday gamer's choice of the Ampere era. RTX 3070, 3070 Ti, high performance gaming, marketed as 2080 Ti power for half the price, 1440p powerhouse and even solid for 4k it was one of the most hyped cards but also one of the hardest to buy at launch rtx 3080 3080 ti top end gaming 4k ready iconic for its performance jump 3080 ti bridged the gap with near 3090 levels for less scalpers and shortages made the 3080 infamous during the gpu crisis rtx 3090 3090 ti titan level performance with up to 24 gigabytes VRAM, aimed at both extreme gamers and creators, though overkill for most. It blurred the line between a gaming card and a workstation card. Now the 40 series, RTX 4060, 4060 Ti. Entry level ADA cards focused on efficiency. DLSS 3 made them perform better than raw specs suggested. They were often recommended for compact builds and budget setups. RTX 4070, 4070 Ti. Mid-range ADA gaming, perfect for 1440p. 4070 Ti was a rebranded, unlaunched 4080 gigabyte. Controversial, but solid. Despite the drama, it ended up being a solid performer with DLSS 3. RTX 4080, 4080 Ti, high-end ADA gaming, great 4K but expensive, best paired with DLSS 3 to justify its premium price. It became known as the luxury choice for serious gamers. RTX 4090, current supercard king, the most powerful consumer GPU to date, crushed 4K and even 8K gaming but also extreme in size, power, and cost, it instantly became the dream GPU for enthusiasts worldwide. 
And now the 50 series beasts, RTX 5050, 5060, 5060 Ti. Expected entry level cards, efficiency, and DLSS improvements should make them shine. Many expect this to be the new best seller for budget gamers. RTX 5070, 5070 Ti, mid range Blackwell Gaming, predicted to dominate 1440p and handle 4K decently, likely to repeat the success of the 3070. It's already being hyped as the real sweet spot for gamers. RTX 5080, high-end Blackwell Gaming, likely to deliver massive 4K power, positioned as the go-to for enthusiasts who don't want to pay 5090 prices. It could become the most balanced high-end GPU of the generation. RTX 5090, expected next-gen supercard king, it's double the power of the RTX 4090, aimed at extreme gamers and creators. This card may redefine what's possible in PC gaming performance. It's just too overpowered and too expensive. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Also comment what GPU you are using.